any uh, any leftover residual questions from what we started with uh, on what Monday? Uh, remember, we're looking at now much more general motion where we don't have simple translation. We also don't have simple rotation, but can have clearly the combination of the two in some way. Which is, of course, the way most things move. Certainly, uh, uh, you look at any part of a car with a lot of stuff in there, not just the wheels going around, but the pistons and all that, you know, just a ton of stuff going on, and all that's uh, uh, a much more general type motion thing. Um, so we looked at, on Monday, we looked at absolute motion and gave a, a, a fairly straightforward, I hope, prescription for how to work some of those problems. It's always easier on the board to just say do this than it is to get to the problems and do that. But uh, with a little practice, hope it gets okay. So. If you're all right with that, then we'll go from our first way to solve these problems, which was uh, the absolute motion, to our next step, which is relative motion, which we need to break into two, well, depending on how you count it, maybe three parts. So this first part that we'll look at today is the relative motion velocity part. We'll find, we'll, we'll look at some problems using our relative motion uh, method here to determine the velocity of some of the components of, of some uh, rotating and or translating gizmos. And um, then uh, we'll use it in a slightly different way on Monday and then next Friday we'll do relative motion acceleration, which is kind of the same, uh, it just uh, as you found out um, with this business, it's the acceleration, there's an extra step, uh, not an extra step, an extra part to it, because the acceleration of anything going in a circle, even if that circle itself is translating, there's a uh, centripetal component as well as a tangential component of the acceleration, not the case with the velocity. All right, so let's uh, let's do a little bit of review here. Here's some object we're looking at. Remember, we're looking at rigid bodies now, and this could be a, a gear, a wheel, a linkage, a, a space station. Kind of looks like a fat brother-in-law on the space station. It could be any of those type of things. And any line we inscribe on there. In fact, any triangle, if you remember, stays the same, though its orientation might change. And so we might ask ourselves uh, something like, uh, well, if I know where point A is somehow, and from you know, some arbitrary origin here, and if I know where point B is, or if those are the two things I want to find and don't know, I can use the fact that there's certainly a, a knowable or uh, at least somewhat distinct relationship between the two that is uh, also a function of where they are individually. In other words, um, the relative position of these, and we have uh, done this before, so this is, this is hopefully review. Uh, we did it when we were looking at particles. We might write it something like this. The relative position of B relative to A. We can do it the other way around too, but i got to put something, so I'll put that. The position of B relative to A, which means if you're sitting at A, where do you need to point your eyes and how far away is point B? I don't care what they're doing. I don't care if one of them's moving 
and the other's accelerating or what. I don't care at, at any particular instant. What we're talking about is if you're at point A, where do you turn and look and find point B? How far away is it and in what direction? And in fact, that vector itself is this one. And we find that by the difference between the two vectors. The book doesn't quite write it that way. What the book writes is point RB. Well, I'll write it down so you can see. You can do either one. I don't care. I, I as usual, have some kind of uh, method to my approach that I found a little bit easier for students over the years. That's what the book has. It doesn't say the relative vector between the two. It says if you want to find B, you need to first go to A and then look in the right direction, which of course makes sense. However, in terms of getting the equation correct, I think this form's easier because you just look at it and you've got B, A, B, A in that same order and you got it. Then you can rotate it around any way you need to to get it to the thing, the shape you need. If you do need B in the problem, then you can take this, you know you got it right, and you can put it in there. If, if you're good at memorizing stuff, you'll always remember this and then you'll get it just right. I always screw this kind of stuff up. I forget, well, wait, which one do I put here? No, which one's there? And I get all messed up. I can't even say. B A, B A, uh, but then I forget where the equals. I get all my stuff. A very small brain. So either one's fine. I don't care which because they're both the same. Um, I just find the first one uh, a bit easier, especially since what we are talking about is the relative position. What we're going to use now is this uh, the time derivative of this, which is the velocity. Um, it won't be quite good enough for us to just take the time derivative of it. That, of course, is true. It's just not going to be as useful for us. So we're going to go a little bit farther with it to make it more useful. Because, uh, well, let's think about what this is. The velocity of point B as it looks to you sitting at point A. So whatever these two things happen to be doing, I don't care. Maybe that one's doing this and that one's doing that. I'm going to put that up a little bit more. As you'll see why in a second. Let's just shoot it up there for a bit. You know, that that's what those two individually might be doing. Since they're tied together as a rigid body, then it makes the rigid body go through space in some general way that we're trying to come to understand. So this is, this is the velocity, uh, what B looks like it's doing if you're sitting at A. So imagine you're sitting here at A. You may be moving, you may be not, but you're looking down at B and you want to see what it's doing as it appears to you. Now, as you look down and remember you're on this body that may be rotating, may be translating, may be doing both, could do all kinds of things. As you're sitting at A and you're looking down at B, B never gets any farther away because you're on a rigid body. So there's no, there's no uh, radial or centripetal or normal component of this relative velocity. B cannot be coming any closer to you. It cannot go any farther away from you. As you're sitting at A, all B can do, as you're looking at it, remember, you're on this thing, you're not looking at the trees in the background and the clouds going by and all the other things we do in cars when we're moving around. You're sitting there at A, you're looking down at B, it can only do one of two things. As you're looking at it, it can either go straight right or straight left relative to your position. That's all it can do. In fact, this is how you look at the world anyway. Here's you. This, 
and you think you're the center of the universe, and you look at the rest of the universe, and all the rest of the universe is doing is orbiting around you. That's all B can do when you sit at A. Can't get any farther away, can't get any closer, can go only side to side. So in essence, it rotates around you just like you think the universe does. That, that it orb around, orbits around you and you're the center of the universe. So if you're looking, if you're here at A, the velocity of B relative to you is either perpendicular to that line that way, or as maybe is more likely with this example sketch on the board, but it's always perpendicular to, to the radius line, the, the connector line between you two. Could be left, could be right, depends upon the problem. But that's all the velocity component of B relative to A could possibly be. Which means um, it could be then uh, the distance between the two of you times the angular velocity of the body upon which you sit. And, uh, well, that needs to be a vector. For our two-dimensional problems, that's going to be in the k direction. Uh, what I don't know is, is it clockwise or counterclockwise? As you stood at A, we could have either one of those possibilities in a problem. Um, but uh, a little often a better way for us to get this is if you remember we had the cross product that will give us the same thing. And uh, for a lot of these problems, I think that works out very nicely. These cross products aren't particularly difficult, but when you run through them, you're immediately set up with the solution you need to the problem, and, and um, I tend to think they're a little bit easier. In other words, over the years, I found more students tend to get it right if they take the time to just step through these rather simple rather simple cross products. I have a question about that. Um, yeah. What is the uh, reason for it being omega cross r and not r cross omega? Because it doesn't work otherwise. You get the wrong, the wrong uh, direction in a right-handed coordinate system. So it's not, it's not that this is something that uh, was made up and decided, oh, let's do this. It was, uh, I don't know how it was developed. I don't know. I've never seen the seen the, uh, the uh, derivation of it, but uh, that is, in our right-handed rule, one well, corner coordinate system, that's the only way it's going to work. Uh, we'll, we'll see it. We'll double check it in a second. Because in this problem, because we don't really know what this one's doing, it's hard to show in this problem. So let's, uh, let's set up a simple example, and we'll check this. Uh, and you can see that it works only that way. I just can't tell you why it's got to be that way because uh, I'm not sure what the, what the uh, derivation was. So imagine we have some simply pin linkage there and it's connected to another link that is much longer and these are these are nice smooth pins there and the other end of that is just riding on a horizontal surface it's not pinned because if it was then this thing wouldn't move we'd have a static problem the dynamics class. So to give you uh, some of the dimension, well, let's see, let's label this A, B, and C for reference.
this is 0.4 meters. That's 0.4 meters. So obviously the arm at this instant pictured is at 45 degrees. May or may not be important. And this is twice that, 0.8 meters. So a lot of these problems, we have to look at them at, a, at, a, at an instant in time, figure out what they're doing. If you were really doing this, you need to know what it's doing at, at all points of time. But for our starters here, we're looking at them at this instant in time. And this one is turning that way. So this is omega a, B is uh, 10 radians per second. So at that instant, at the instant that is 45 degrees, the angular velocity of that link is 10 radians per second. Now, uh, what happens next, I don't know. I don't know which one of those is constant. Uh, doesn't matter. That's not what, the, what, the, what we're asking the problem. Also, uh, a quick note that students very often forget. Uh, notice this is not A relative to B or B relative to A or anything like that. Everything on a particular rigid body has the same angular velocity. Any line I could draw on a, on a rigid body, and remember we started the thing with triangles, but it doesn't matter, it can be any part of it, any line on it, any piece of it, as long as this is all one rigid body, whatever angular velocity it has, so does every part of it. Uh, what that means to us is, uh, or if you want another way to phrase it, uh, angular velocity is a floating vector which means it's always in a particular direction as drawn here out of the board, but it's out of the board anywhere we need to put it. We can put it anywhere and it's exactly the same, uh, exactly the same vector has exactly the same meaning. That's not necessarily true with the velocity. I can't say the velocity of A is up here because point A isn't up there. I could say the velocity of A is like this instead. That gives us the same thing. Velocity is a sliding vector. As uh, omega is a floating vector, can go anywhere. Velocity can only be along the same line to describe it. Force is also a sliding vector. I can have a force on A in a particular direction, but if I move that force up here, everything's different. But if I have a moment on an object, that moment's true for that object everywhere. If you remember that from statics. All right, so here's our problem, our problem do jewer, and we want to find two things. Find the velocity of point C and the angular velocity of the arm BC. So a, a simple two length problem. All right, let's see. Let's start with what we know and see where it goes. Let's see the velocity of C. Um, we know that that's going to be the velocity of B. The fact that point B might be moving plus the way that C moves relative to B. That's just this relative velocity thing with B's and C's and then uh, reconfigured a little bit so it's in the form of like or might like. So that's just our relative velocity equation. Solving for the one, one of the things we were told to find. Now let's see. Uh, we also know 
that the velocity of c relative to b is uh, like that form. So that's going to be omega bc cross c relative to b, wherever, wherever it is in location. Well, that's pretty easy. That's just geometry. That we can come up with. So that's, that's doable. Here's C, there's B. We know what the geometry is here. We can figure that out uh, without too much trouble. Uh, we're looking for that, so that's not known. Um, we don't know that, so we're going to have to come up with it. Um, and that'll help us find that. So, so the one equation, this one equation, has both of the things we're looking for. So let's see. We've got to think about it a little bit more. Um, oh, there is one other thing that we know about this. We can put in this velocity vector of point C that we're supposed to find. Because of the problem, we know that point C has to go along that table which means we also know that the vector BC is also BC, the magnitude, in the I direction. It's got to be. It's restricted to traveling on a horizontal table. All right, so let's see. Let's, uh, let's double check what this position vector is that we need. Because when we have that, we're going to need to do the cross product of it. So let's see. RC relative to B. There's B. And there's C. So that's C relative to B. If you are at point B, you need to look in that direction, and you need to look in that distance to find point C. What is that vector? Well, as a vector, that's its magnitude. But as a vector, and you should keep this in vector form, because we're going to need it in cross product, which is a lot better in vector form. Uh, point A I minus point four J. Yeah? And that's meters. So R C B was no big deal. Just pull it right off the geometry. Sometimes it's a little more difficult, of course, but that one's pretty straightforward. Now, uh, omega BC, well, let's see. this cross product itself is, is, is uh, relatively easy to write out. And then all we have to do is add it to this. Well, what is that? What is the velocity of point B? Because we, if we, we got to get that to add it in. Oh, it's... It's the velocity of point A plus the velocity of B relative to A. That's our relative velocity equation. We can do that for any rigid body in the problem. And AB is a rigid body. ABC isn't a rigid body, so we couldn't do it from point C all the way back to point A. But we can do it from point B to point C. That would give us this velocity B. We could put it in there, and uh, we just add them all together. We'd have the velocity uh, of point C. If we knew what the velocity A was. If we don't know what this is and can't find it, we're screwed here. What's the velocity of A? Zero. It's pin. So in this case, the velocity of B, the absolute velocity of B is the same thing as the velocity of B relative to A. And that's 
omega AB crossed with RB relative to A. Velocity B to A, position B to A. It's got to be in the same direction or you're going to introduce a fake minus sign. Um, no sweat, that was given. Uh, no sweat, that's geometry. So we can, we can do this, put it in there, add it to the result of this cross product, and get our answer. So let's see, let's do that. Let's, let's do this velocity B first, since it's a, a cross product, and we may need a little bit of a reminder how to do cross products. Okay, so I've just taken this now and moved it up there so we can do the cross product. What is the vector omega AB? I have to have it in vector form so I can cross product it. It's magnitude 10 radians per second and negative K into the board, right hand rule. So minus 10 radians per second K crossed with where B is relative to where A is. And that's 45 degrees. So that's 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 pretty easy. That's pretty easy. Oh, in fact it, it's those pieces there. It's, it's 0.4 i plus 0.4 j meters. All right, let's uh, let's set up the matrix. Do the cross product. These are fairly simple cross products in two dimensions because we all have one vector that's a, a one dimension only. So let's practice i. J, K is the top row of our matrix. The second row is the first vector in the cross product, which is minus 10 K, 0, 0, minus 10 radians per second. These, uh, these vector components all have units, and the units are as important in cross products as they are in any other equation. Uh, third row is the second vector. 0.4, 0.4, 0, and each of those is meters. So there's our cross product matrix. Now, uh, it always helps if you know what you're looking for in the end, it'll help you keep the minus sign straight. Let's see, VB must look like that, right? Because uh, B is going in a circle around A, that circle is going in that direction at that instant. So we know that we're going to have a plus I component and a minus J component. So we can get our minus signs right. Alright, cover the first row. We got that minus that product, which has another minus sign in it, which is then. 4i and it'll be meters per second which makes sense for velocity cover of minus now the j cover of that minus that which has now two minus signs in it plus a third is a minus sign which is also 4 J, and then the K, there's all zero. So does that make sense? 4I minus 4J, 4 45 degrees, makes sense. We know it's moving at 45 degrees. 
So the two components should be the same. Plus I, minus J, we're okay. All right, where does that take us now? Now, now we've got this. We've got that piece. We've got that piece. Shoot. How many unknowns do we have? VC, is that two unknowns or one? It's a vector. Is it two unknowns or one? It's one, because we already know the direction. We just don't know the magnitude. So this is one unknown. What about this? Is this one unknown or two? It's a vector, but is it one unknown or two? We don't know the magnitude. Do we know the direction of omega BC? Isn't it just, yeah, just the uh, position vector R? No, no, it's even easier than that to come up with. What would this linkage do if it was actually working? If AB is going that way, BC has got to go that way. It's got to go to, C's got to stay here. B's coming down to here. It's going to do something like that. It's got a little bit. It's going that way. No other way that linkage could work. So we know the direction of omega BC. We don't know the magnitude. So how many unknowns? Two. Two total. Oh, magnitude, magnitude unknown. The directions are both known. So we need two equations. So here's one equation. Where's the other equation? On eBay? week or two in statics and, or, or physics one we were, and we we're summing the forces and we had two unknowns and the only equation we had was the sum of the force vectors is zero it was two equations vector <coughs> equations break out into their component pieces just like the vectors do this is two equations and I'll show you how we get to it. So let's see. I'm going to need some board space. So uh, keep 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 this in mind. And well, I'll write it up here. Uh, we now got VB, which we need right there. 4i minus 4j meters per second. All right, so we've got that vector. We need to do this cross product to get VC. So here we go. V, uh, VC is VB, which we've got now, plus omega BC, which we don't have, crossed with R CB, which we do have. So just that is IJK. Uh, I don't know omega BC. What do I do? Well, you write it in as an unknown. That's what we're looking for. It's it's omega BC K. So it's zero zero omega BC. I don't know what it is, but this is how I'm going to find it. And 
RCV, the third line, I know. It's 0.8 minus 0 0.40. And that's meters. Okay, so far? That's just the mechanics of writing out a cross product. I don't know about you, I can't do cross products on the fly. I gotta do this and, and do them carefully because there's minus signs that disappear, there's multiplication things you can screw up. Just the possibilities for failure are endless. Um, and this, remember, is the velocity of C relative to B, which we know is going to be something like that. If you were sitting at point B and this arm's rotating that way, that's what you're going to see point C do. So we already know uh, what it should look like. All right, so the I direction, that minus that, which is two minus signs. So it's 0.4 omega BC I is the I component. Is that right? Really easy to mess up minus signs here, so be careful. Minus the next one, which is cover the J, do it in the same direction, that minus that. So we had one minus here, plus the first minus anyway, so that now becomes a plus all right, uh, 0.8 omega BC. J. So we expect both components to be positive, which is exactly what we drew and expect. Both components to be positive. There is no K component to those two zeros. So, now, uh oh, I mean, let's see. I can put it right below here now as we do it. So VB is 4I plus the product of this vector, or plus, plus this cross product, which we just did. So add the I components. We've got 4I from here and 0.4 omega BC from there. in the I direction. Is that right? That's the I component of VBC plus the cross product we just did. In agreement? Or just not talking to me now? Plus the J components. Minus 4 plus 0.8 omega BC. in the J direction, and we have no K component. Ugh. Is this, is this still two equations, two unknowns? We know VC in the I direction, so this must be VC. Because that's what we're heading for. Uh, but what's that? Zero. That's zero. There is no J component in our answer. So that J component must be zero. Well, you can solve then for omega BC, bring it back into here, and get VC itself. And, yeah, omega BC should be positive. That's how we followed it all the way through. That's why there's no minus signs in here on omega BC. Beautiful bit of work. Wait, so how do we finish the problem? Solve these. You know this component J does not exist, so it must, the coefficient must be zero. 
Solve for omega BC. That's one equation, one unknown. Put it into here. One equation, one unknown, you're done. As long as we didn't mess up any minus signs anywhere. I don't think we did. So, omega BC, the magnitude, we already have the direction. We got that by observation. So it's nice. What is that? Uh, point fifty? Five? Five. Five. And we know it's got to be radians per second because that's what the whole equation was. And so the five comes back into here. Magnitude of VC then is what? Six? And we know that's meters per second, because that's what all the units were there. All done. Now, I don't expect you to come up with it on your own, but um, if you take it step by step, you know, we, we, we started with what we were asked to find and put down the first thing we knew about it. We know that VC, we know how it moves relative to B. Now we said, well, okay, what do I know? Uh, I can get RCB, that's not too big a deal. VB, remember, I dropped out the same thing. We figured out what it is relative to A. That's more stuff we, we can find, we can know. Just don't forget that little step. It's very simple, very obvious when you see it, but uh, students just tend to, you know, they're, they're looking for the big complicated stuff for all their answers, and sometimes we'll forget the simplest little things for the answers. Okay, got the pieces. We try another one. That was fun. That was fun. Uh, most students don't like cross products, but these are pretty simple cross products. Just keep your minus signs in tune. Uh, plus, remember, almost any time you're doing a cross product you at least have some idea of the sense of it. And so you should know if your numbers should be positive or negative. You can determine if you're making a mistake most of the time. All right, so let's do another one. I'm getting tired here. I don't want to fall asleep driving the van this afternoon, so you need to do a little work on this one. Here we go. We have a, a wheel. That's not even touching the conveyor belt. It's rolling. <laughs> so it's kind of like magic. So here's here's the conveyor belt. And the conveyor belt velocity of the conveyor is two feet per second. And the radius of the wheel, half a feet. It's rolling on the conveyor without slipping. God forbid if we had to do problems where they were slipping yet. We're just learning. It. All right, I want to find a, uh, well, only need to find one thing. Right here at 9 o'clock is point A. Find the velocity of A. Remember, these things are uh, these things are vectors. 
If we were doing particle motion, we'd just say A is moving the same thing as the conveyor belt. We're not doing that anymore. We're not doing rigid body general motion. That means this thing's turning as uh, C is moving. Oh, in fact, we have the speed at which it's turning. Sorry. Omega of the wheel, 15 radians per second. Wait, is it really uh, rotating that way? I say it is. Alright. Now, I didn't say it's not rolling along the conveyor belt as the conveyor belt's moving. I just said there's the speed of the conveyor belt, here's the speed of the, the wheel, what's the speed of A? need to find not the speed of A, the velocity of A. So we need the, the magnitude and the direction. All right. Um, these relative motion things, we need to link the, the speed of the thing we're looking for to something we can either, we either know or we can find. So we need to link this velocity with the relative velocity equation to some other point that will allow us then to find it. Oops. We want to find the velocity of A if we know the velocity of some other point B, we could find it. Is there any other point whose velocity we know? We know the uh, velocity of the point right at the bottom of it. How fast is it going? B sub C, two feet per second. This point here on the wheel is going the same velocity as the conveyor belt. Did I read you right, Alex? Yeah. Call that point B. I mean, his proposed point B. Do we know the velocity of point B? He says it's the same as velocity of C. Jake doesn't believe so. Doobie doesn't believe so. Pat doesn't want to play. Is that what that... No, I don't think so. Bobby... Nope. Colin? Thanks guys for backing me up. That's good guy stuff. <laughs> well, well now let's it think. Let's think. No, nah, hang on. Uh, Alex, where'd, where'd that come from, that idea? It's an interesting idea. Nobody else sees it. Where did it come from for you? Um, it came from the fact that I was in contact with the ground at that point. Well, conveyor belt. Not, not only in contact, but there's no slipping. Yeah. Now. Uh, Monday, we did this deal of a rolling wheel in contact with the ground such that it wasn't slipping. Do you remember the speed we determined that contact point to be moving at any instant? Zero. What it really was, if you think about it, is that velocity of that point is the same as the thing it's in contact with, which happened to be zero on Monday. It's no longer zero, the ground is now moving. That point is not moving relative to the ground it's in contact with. There's no slipping, that point's got to have the same speed as whatever it's in contact with, which is the conveyor. Alex, you are perfectly correct. Right, VB guys. equals VC equals VCI equals 2 feet per second I. We're going to take a moment for the class to apologize to Alex for not believing in him. Jake won't do it. Look at that, Jake. I'm not going to do it. Hey, would, would one person like to represent the class?
All right, Alex. After class, we'll just beat him up. We'll make him pay. We'll make him pay. Jake, are you okay with that? It's not an obvious thing. Well, with Alex and me, but not the rest of you. You have to remember that that the no slip condition guarantees that the bottom of the wheel is moving whatever speed it's in contact with. Because if they're in contact and they're not slipping, they've got to have the same speed. Uh, no, because the whole wheel must be moving that way at that second. And it's turning too. So point B, point A is going to have a different velocity. Remember the, the wheel isn't just moving along, it's moving along in there and turning. So we've got to we've got to trust the equations and find that. So let's see. We're looking for the velocity of point A. It's let's see, it's VB minus V, B relative to A. Do I have that right? Oh, here's something that, that might also be a little more subtle that uh, can sometimes help and uh, uh, it should help here. It's this, and don't don't forget this little rule. It'll, it'll help us here. Uh, v of one thing relative to another is equal to the opposite of the one thing relative to the other, uh, with those things reversed. If you think about it, that makes some pretty good sense. If, if you're on something and God knows what it's doing as it tumbles through space, you're sitting at A looking down at B, B can only do a horizontal motion. I'll, I'll draw it that way, but it could be moving in the other direction. Now if you're at B looking back at A, it's got to be doing the opposite of that. And that's perpendicular to the line connecting. And if you write out the cross product, you'll prove for exactly that. So we'll, uh, we'll chuck that in gets rid of a minus sign, also makes the relative velocities we need a little bit more obvious because we're looking for point A. We know what point B is doing, so it's a little more obvious to, to look at that thing. What is A doing relative to B? Well, in fact, there's the line connecting them. B is, uh, if we were on the conveyor belt ourselves, B wouldn't be moving, and the wheel turns that way, that's got to be A relative to B right there. So B is not moving to A. Sorry? What? Go ahead and ask your questions. Alex will answer it for you. around, B always stays at the bottom. Right, that's what you're saying, right? Well, no, remember a split second later, we have a new contact point. This contact point won't exist anymore. It won't be a contact point. But at this instant, point B is moving the same velocity as the conveyor belt, and A relative to that, since the wheel's turning and that point's not moving, it looks like the entire wheel at that instant is rotating around point B. An uh, instant later, things are different. So we even know then uh, what the sense, remember this is a cross product, 
let's see, velocity of b, oh, velocity of b, uh, that's the same thing as the velocity of c. So that one's done. We just need the velocity of a relative to b. Sorry? Mega a b cross r b a. Omega a b. It's got to be the same. Uh, these these points always have to be on a rigid body together. Um, Cross with r a relative to b. Have to be in the same order. All right. Um, omega a b. Do we know that vector? What we're trying to do is this piece here that we'll then add to VC. Do we know this this vector, first part of the cross product? Minus 15K, because it's into the board. Minus 15 radians per second, K. Oh, I'll, uh, does it matter that this wheel is on the conveyor belt and the conveyor belt's moving? No. Omega, remember, is a floating vector. Cross, what is the vector A relative to B? Well, point A is here, point B is here. They must be separated by a 45 degree line. That's uh, got components to the radius. 0.5 feet I plus 0.5 feet J. Alright, so you can do that cross product. See if we all get the same thing. So now 
out, we, we're doing this study to figure out if we put a link arm itself connected to point A, and then we need to figure out what that's going to, well, you, now we know what the velocity of point A. Okay, Bob? No? Mad at me? Yeah, mad at me. Not talking to me, not talking to Alex. Your friends are dropping like crazy. It's going to be you in a rocking chair with a shotgun on your lap someday. <laughs> Damn kids, get off my lawn. <laughs> Ready for your own? Yeah, man. Bring it on. Nothing people like more at uh, lunchtime on a Friday afternoon than a problem. Alright, so here it is. Very much the same as those, just, uh, you know, this, the situations all change. So, there we go. Here's a, a wheel. That's fixed. Attached to it is a link arm. And pinned there. So as the wheel goes around, that link arm is going to go around with it. That end is going to go around and um, make this whole linky thing work for us. And that's attached to another link arm. that itself is pinned. So as the wheel goes around, this thing's gotta go chuck it, chuck it, chuck it, chuck it, kinda like uh, the old choo-choo train that used to, used to do, that, that we loved from our childhood. All right, simple picture. Here's some uh, what else is going on. Each arm is 0.2 meters. And the wheel is half that, a radius of 0.1 meters. At this instant, let's see, let's label these A, B, C, and D. At this instant, Omega AB is 30 radians per second. And theta here is 60 degrees. Well, uh, if the wheel's going at a regular speed, like it might be if it's attached to a motor, then those, uh, that omega would change as that angle changes. Um, but that's not what the question asks. We're just asking at this instant. But if you were really making something here that needed to work, you'd have to do the full analysis. So do the full analysis when you need to. Let's not do that yet. Fine. The angular speed of BC, that link arm, the, the other link arm, and the angular speed of the wheel. We can call that omega DC or CD, whichever one you want. Okay. Any idea how we can get to these? And as you've seen, uh, and as you can imagine, that uh, they're linked, so how they work influences each other, but the equation they appear in might be a separate equation. For example, we do have an equation that would have that in it. It might be, uh, uh, let's see, the velocity of C equals the velocity of D plus the velocity of C relative 
to D. That's true, isn't it? And this velocity of C relative to D, that's going to have in it the speed at which DC is rotating. What's the velocity of D? Zero. So that's easy. So this will be then omega CD, which we're looking for. We don't have it. We're looking for it. R uh, C relative to D. Oh, that's no problem. Look how nicely that thing lined up. Okay, so that that uh, smells suspiciously doable. What can you come up with that one? The angular speed of BC is going to depend upon the speed of C and the speed of B. Speed of C, we would hopefully get out of here, could then use it with the speed of B, velocity of B, to find omega BC. What's the velocity of B itself, though? Well, B is on an arm that's pinned at one end, and we know how fast it's turning. So we know that B is going to have that velocity at that instant, and its magnitude will be R omega. So when we get the velocity of B, we'll have the velocity of C. Those two together will give us the velocity, the angular velocity of the arm BC. So there, I, this is just like your mom used to do when she said she wanted you to cook dinner. She put out the recipe book, she put out the, the things. Some stuff's still in the refrigerator though because you don't want it out on the counter where the cat can eat it. That equation that you have omega dc would that change at all? This one? Yeah. Would that change at all if you move point c up to like point zero, like zero five meters? Like the equation as written would not change. The numbers that'll come out of it would change a lot. Okay. That's my question. Good. But but this holds no matter what. Uh, especially since D is pinned at the center, it's the center of the wheel. So that general equation holds the specifics of it, changes at some instant in time later. All right, so so we work this one out. See if uh, how many unknowns are in this equation. What two are they? BC and omega. We, we don't know the magnitude. Do we know the direction? Uh, yes. Yeah. At that instant, as things turn, at that instant, that's got to be BC. That's the only thing it can do at that instant. An instant later, it's doing something else entirely different. Not entirely different, but it's not doing that. So. The magnitude there is unknown. What about omega CD? Do we know the direction of it? Yeah, you can figure that out from the picture. What you it may help you if you just draw what things will look like a second later. And then you can tell the orientation of, of the arm CD and how it's going to change. So, yeah, we know the direction of C and the direction of the uh, wheel C. Yep, it was here, now it's here, it's twisted, 
counterclockwise a little bit. It shifted some, but it twisted counterclockwise, and that's what omega has to do with. So are we supposed to find the velocity of that point C? Why? I mean, how? How? By working this, doing this cross product. I thought we were solving for omega CD. You are? You do this cross product, it's a vector equation, it'll have two equations, two unknowns. It'll have the I components grouped together, and it'll have the J components oh, grouped together. And you know what each of those should be. direction omega CD should be uh, and the PC we know too. C relative to D. Man, cross products can be simpler than that. That's the position of C relative to D, which is this position vector, R C relative to D. Actually, we uh, those are perpendicular. If you remember the cross products, when the vectors are perpendicular, it's just the product of the two magnitudes and well that's what we got right there anyway. And we know it's in the I direction. So uh, that cross product is B C R T B or O point one B C, which we don't know. And uh, Omega CD cross, let's see, Omega CD cross, so that's here, down to here, down like that, works perfectly. Oh, uh, so I get point one yeah, yeah, B. Omega C D. Uh, Wait, I'm glad I got two ears. Do you take one? Alex, you take the other, go. Well, Alex is probably right here, uh -oh. so you might as well just, you know. <laughs> Which year were you talking in? Wait, your ear. Alex, what? Alex, ladies first. Doobie? Oh, Luke, Doobie's busy. She's drinking coffee. Nope, she's done. <laughs> it's the same thing you did. Point, what was it? Point one omega CD, not point one AC. I'm not sure where the negative Oh, yeah, where did the BC come from? That, that came from uh, Magic Math Land. Oh, yeah, so this is the so I, that, minus that, we have two minus signs. I mean, well, the negative disappeared. It was because oh, zero okay. minus yeah. the negative is positive. Plus, we, uh, we know it should be positive anyway because that's what we got here. Yeah, we do. It's I mean, got to go that way. How do we know that? I can't because it's, it's attached to the wheel. As this goes that way, that's going to go this way, the wheel's going to go that way. That's all it can do. So the second lever doesn't pivot around B? It does, but B is moving. Because A, B is moving. You know, a little bit later, Those arms are going to look something like that. And point C will have moved up to here. Point B will move down to here. Alright. Alright? So, that's so confused me. So why is B, C pointed horizontally right? And not because at that instant, that's what it's doing. 
Oh, an instant later, it's moved to here, has a little bit of up velocity. Moved to here, has a little bit more up. Moved to here, it's always going to be moving tangential to the wheel. But, did not ask about those later times. Asked about this time. What? Don't we still have two on Uh huh. So we got some more work to do. Sorry. The CC is going to be the other one too. Yep. Because we have another equation for VC. It's V B because it's V C is uh, uh, this point C is connected to point D and it's connected to point B. So that will also have V C in it. Huh? Uh, yeah, VB, we know, because it's just circular motion about point A at a known angular velocity. Those two things are known. So with that equation, that's a R B A omega A B. Uh, well, that's negative. Uh, oh, we we also know the direction too. Let's see what that's 30 degrees there. If you need it. So cosine 30. velocity is tangential to the circle or perpendicular to the radius, the line connecting the two, and we know that distance, which is RABA, we know the angular speed, omega AB, since they're perpendicular it's just the product is the magnitude there, and then we now know this angle, that magnitude, they can give us the whole vector. I was just confused about the, that cosine 30, sine 30. What was with that vector? It's this vector here, VV. There it is right there. So it's got an I component that's VV cosine 30, I. That's the I component. The J component is VV minus sine 30j minus because it's going down. Oh, you just affect the now. And that's all known. Because uh, that's 0.2 meters, that's 30 radians a second. So that whole vector 
answer is known. We add to it C relative to B. We know RCB because that link arm is horizontal. We don't know omega CB, but we do know that this all comes out to be the same as that because that's BC as well. Come here. That should be two unknowns, omega CB and omega CB, the two things we were looking for that you write down that one equation. Oh my goodness, time to go. I wonder if nobody was smiling anymore. So, well. My suggestion is don't do anything else this weekend. Just do these. They just take a little practice. They take a good, a, a decent drawing. It may not hurt at times to redo the drawing because they do get kind of messed up. But uh, double check what you get for that and we can finish it on.